Hey everybody, welcome back to Nick Case Designs. Uh, if you're just joining us, my name is James. I am the main soap maker here at Nick Case Designs. Uh, today we're going to be making a holiday favorite. If you checked out my Instagram, I posted a bit on our story. Um, I've got some wonderful holiday colors coming up. Um, we're still, it's still actually really hot outside and it is definitely fall or at least trying to be. Um, I think today it's like 85 degrees. It was definitely like 90 something the other day, so we're not really doing fall very well. Go South Dakota. Um, but I'm just jumping right ahead because I want to make some fun soaps and I want you to see them all as well. So in this container I have some beautiful, let's see if I can get close enough. So this is Snowflake Sparkle Mica from Brambleberry, and it is mixed with a little sweet almond oil. Um, when I was looking at the ingredients, or rather the composition, like what goes into the snowflake sparkle mica, I think it's actually, well, when I was reading it, it's like titanium dioxide and like this bio or eco-friendly glitter. Um, so water might have been a better choice, because it's kind of thick, but it's okay. And then I have some shamrock green mica. I love that. It's like a nice light. For me, it's kind of like a minty, like a bright minty green. And then some red mica, all from Brambleberry. Um, and I've got my just standard recipe going on. And then in this container, I have my peppermint essential, or not peppermint essential oil, peppermint fragrance oil uh, from Nature's Garden. It smells exactly like peppermint. There's no sugariness to it, which I think can come across in a lot of, uh, you know, fragrance oily peppermint. I do have a different fragrance oil from Nature's Garden called Peppermint Fluff, and that one does have like a vanilla scent to it, but I actually like it for that reason. Like that one's meant to be like a sweet peppermint. I'm going for like more of a traditional peppermint. Um, and then I'm going to be using my red and green, like, because when I think about peppermint, I think about, you know, red peppermints, but I also think about green spearmints, which I mean, it's not peppermint, but whatever. It's my soap. I'll do what I want. Um, anywho, so I'm going to get soap in here. The design is going to be pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to split off. The most of the soap is going to be, um, with this snowflake sparkle mica, and then I'm going to have probably a hanger swirl of the red and green. I'm giving this a little blend here. We're soaping it around 100 degrees. And I am going to strain in my lye. So, get that going. So, I hope everyone's having a fabulous fall. You would think living in southeastern South Dakota that we would be a little more far into it than we are, but we're not. Um, I actually need to get my butt outside today and start doing some garden tending because this is the season when you want to start cleaning up your um, summer perennials, things that have kind of held over from spring, like my daylilies need to get trimmed up, my irises need to get trimmed up. Um, but I've also been planting a lot, which is not typically advised. You want to plant, from what I was reading, it's best to plant uh, any of your perennials for next year, like, what is it, six weeks before your first frost date, which for us, I think our first frost date is like the second or third week of October, um, and I still have one plant to plant, and I'm really just like cutting it close. But it's an evergreen, so I think I'm going to be okay, I'm going to mulch it high, and I think it'll be alright. So, anywho, enough about gardening. This is a soap channel. What are you doing? I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side. I've gotten myself into a nice uh, light trace there. A little bit of spillage. That's okay. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna spill it off. My red and my green. And I'm going to do more red than green, I think. I want the green to just kind of be like an accent. 
rather than a statement. So we'll do about half as much green. And then this is the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this in there. And I can't guarantee how white this is gonna be. I've never just used the Snowflake mark Sparkle Mica like on its own. I've always had it mixed with something else. So if it's not white enough, I'm gonna put together a little bit of titanium dioxide just to get it going. Because I don't know how white this is gonna get. Yeah, that is not white enough for me. I mean, in reality, what I really wanted out of it was the shimmer, which I'll still get adding some titanium dioxide. Um, so what I'm gonna do is grab some TD and not destroy my kitchen in the process. Um, get a spoon here. And I don't need a whole lot. I'll probably just do, this is probably like a teaspoon. Get my distilled water, which is definitely in a place where I put it. There it is. Ha ha, found it. Y'all were doubting me. Just give it a little splash. And I am going to wait to put that in, I think, um, until I get the other two mixed up. Because, as we know, titanium dioxide does accelerate your trace. And I just don't need that negativity in my life. So red is a funny color in cold process soap making. It's hard to get a true red. Obviously, the concentration matters. So if you're using, you know, a teaspoon of mica in a cup of soap versus a teaspoon of mica in four cups of soap, you're gonna get very different levels of red. Um, I try to balance that as best I can, but the thing is you also don't wanna add so much color that it just, like makes your tub turn a funny color. So it's a hard balance to strike. I get it. No one's perfect, but we do our best. Oh, I don't want that there. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna get in here with a, you know, let's get in here with the spoon. Big rule of thumb, don't reinvent the wheel. You don't have to have fancy mix and implements. You can just use a spoon. It's just as good. I wonder if I'll actually be able to blend that. Maybe. Let me try and give it a little bit of a blend. That's good. Give this red a little bit of a bit of a once over here. Now I am going to add my titanium dioxide. Boom, there we go. Boom, skadoom. Get this in here. That small amount of red isn't going to affect anything, so I wouldn't worry about it. as white as I want it to be. Hmm. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more. I don't want to overdo it. But now that I've introduced the titanium dioxide, we gotta get moving. Counter. That might do 
it. Let's find out. <laughs> oil. So this is a really great fragrance oil that does not discolor or accelerate. And I love it <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> so many bubbles. Okay. strong peppermint smell. I am a big fan already. Okay, so um, let's do an update here. What do we got going on? Um, you know what? Let's make it a in the pot swirl, maybe? I think that would be fun. You know, actually, let's do, let's take a Clyde Yoshida a bit. We're going to do a bit of a concentric circle thing. Ugh. I love strong contrast colors. Do a big spiral here, why not? Oh, this is looking so Christmassy. I've actually not celebrated Christmas since I was a child. It's not really like a reason other than, you know, I'm not a big holidays person. I love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is like my jam. Um, but just never been a huge fan, you know. Let's go in here with this guy and we'll just, well, no, nope, no, nope, that's not in the nature of a swirl of this design. So we're going to start pouring, but this year I think I might celebrate Christmas, I don't know. Going from the center. Ooh, that's so fun. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna grab my backup mold, because you guys know me. I like having another mold by. This one's gonna have a lot more of the white in it, which is totally fine. Oops, spilling soap everywhere. Get in there, scrape the sides. Scrape the bottom. So I've been experimenting with not using as stark a water discount as I have been in the past. I did tweak my recipe a couple months ago, but I was still using the same amount of water discount. And I was finding that things just set up so fast. And while I it normally doesn't bother me to have things set up super fast, because um, I usually work pretty fast if I can avoid, you know, going slow. But uh, I don't know. It's been working out. So normally, uh, let's see, my recipe calls for about 14 ounces of oil or water, sorry. Um, and I usually put in like seven and a half. So a big discount. 
And that's because, I mean, I knew my recipe. I was fine with taking that much out. It really helped with glycerin rivers and it helped with soda ash. And I've been finding that, you know, it just sets up too quickly now. So what I'm gonna start doing is what I should have been doing all along. Give this a tap, get some of those bubbles out, or at least up to the surface. And uh, just use, use more water, basically, is what it comes down to. Um, so I'm pretty jazzed. It had, I did that on the last soap and this soap. I think it worked out pretty well. I'm just going to decorate the top with the rest of this leftover soap. I'll come in here and do a little swirl action. So this kind of ended up with like a lot less white in it. So I'm going to be curious to see how that's going to play out. Um, I think it'll look great, but you just never know. But man, I just love the smell of peppermint. Mint is one of my all-time favorite scents. I use it in so many different things. Like, I mean, obviously I love like Burt's Bees, you know, like the lip balm. And I mean, I, I make a lot of soaps with mint, like a lavender mint. Um, I'm also thinking of doing like a vanilla mint later in the year. Um, so I think that would be really great. I love vanilla mint. It's so pretty. Or pretty. Wow. It smells great. I've been watching um, some other soap makers making some of their like wholesale orders. I am just in love. If you guys don't watch AM Happy Soap, please do. Her soaps are just so amazing and fun. And like, I don't know what colorants she uses or like, well, I don't really know anything because I haven't asked her, but uh, she is such a lively social media. And like, I just love her soaps. Like she does cutting videos and making, she'll do sped up making videos. Um, she does a lot of wholesale orders. She just did this cotton candy collection for this company. I don't even know. I honestly, like it's so gorgeous. So anyway, um, if that's a shameless plug, go check her out. Cause it's just lovely the work that she does. Um, All right, so I wonder if that has set up enough where I can texture it. Do I want to texture it or do I just want to like swirl it? Decisions, decisions. I'm so good at making such a mess. I think I'm just gonna swirl it. We texture a lot of things. We don't need to texture everything. Get a little. These skewers are great to have around. They're just like barbecue skewers. And I just love having them around. So we'll go in one direction, go in the other. And I'm not going very deep. I'm just swirling this stuff on top. Ugh, now it's not good enough for me. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna do like a once over.
Yeah, I wonder if I'll just do like a tiny little swirl. On both sides and then I'll cut these in half. Like I'll cut it down the middle and make these like little samples. I have had literally more than one request for sample bars and I am absolutely god awful at doing it. So maybe this is the boost that I need. All right, so here we go. Check it out. Gorgeous. All right, the big guy here. Mmm. Glam. So this is gonna be a super fun sassy soap to cut tomorrow. Um, and of course, I'm going to invite you along for the ride because y'all are special to me. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, shout them out in the comments. If you like the content, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Tell me all about it. Um, if you make some of the soap from our Easy Peasy Soap tutorial, show me. I want to see what you make. Or if you've modified the recipe, you got your own recipe, I don't care. I want to see what y'all are making. Um, I'm planning on doing like another soap tutorial soon, talking a little bit more about um, affordability, things that you can do on a dime. I know that that's like a big concern for a lot of people making soap. And now that I'm staring at this, it's not good enough for me. I have to put some, I have to put some more glitter on the top. I can't not do it. Um, but anywho, yeah, so. Like, I want to see what y'all get up to because I love it. All right, we'll go under a little of this. Oh, it looks like snow. This stuff does like fly in the air and like I end up breathing it in, but it looks like I'm in a snow globe. It's so pretty. Look at that. So fun. Okay. I think I'm happier with that now. I don't know if you guys can see all the particles like floating around in the air. Hopefully you can. So I added some sparkle to the top because I think I can't leave well enough alone. Mmm, sparkly. Okay. So anyway. Like I was saying, if you make anything, show me. I really love seeing it. I love, I, I get on Instagram, I search hashtags all the time. Um, so I get on there and I look at soap making and soap videos and ASMR soap and Bramble On and all these other hashtags that, you know, yield a lot of really great results because so many people are making such awesome things. And that's how you get to know, you know, who's doing what, like what's happening in the wider world of soap making. Um, and there are a lot of really amazing things happening. So again, if you like the video, let me know. Um, if you have an idea for a soap that you want me to make, or if you want to challenge me in some way, go right ahead. If you have questions, shout them out in the comments. I love to hear from you pretty much all the time. Um, and we'll see you back tomorrow for the cut. Everyone have a great weekend, and I will see you soon. Bye.